it going everybody? Well it's stinking hot and the humidity has gone through the roof. We had a downpour this morning, the sun's just come out and who needs the tropics to go on a holiday when you got it here in Victoria? Who would have thought? Oh bugger me. Anyway, so this humidity that we're getting and fluctuation in temperature as I did it yesterday in my post and I did an article um, on my social page about diseases that become prevalent with high levels of humidity then rain and then cold weather and hot weather just knocks the plants about and we spoke about getting the soil up there in you know the quality so the life in the soil helps to protect the plant because it gives the plant all the nutrients it needs uh, but even with that, sometimes plants just don't cope uh, for many a reason. Sometimes they get affected above ground by pests and diseases that just appear on it. And, you know, I've been gardening pretty much all my life and sometimes wonder how on earth do some of these diseases just appear out of nowhere. You wonder if sometimes the plant or the seed is actually uh, carrying the, the problem when it arrives into your garden. And that's why I always wash your tools, wash your hands between plants and avoid um, keeping any plants or composting any of the foliage that you harvest and if somebody could do something about these flies that'd be wonderful. Now I'm standing in the, next to a bed here which is really rich in organic matter but these plants I bought from a store, I won't mention the store but it's no disrespect to the store itself but the plant themselves just look terrible and I thought I'd let them go on and see what would eventuate and it's exactly what I see um, and it's anticipated. We've got early blight, we've got um, a leaf spot, angular leaf spot developing on it, and you can see the markings here. I'll just break this leaf. We're not going to go to another plant. So you can see all those markings there. Uh, they just, there's not a hell of a lot you can do with this. You need to aerate the plant, yes, you've got to prune it, um, and you obviously got to spray it as well. I'm not going to do any of the above, I'm just going to cut it out and burn it. I'm not even going to put it in the compost and that's something you should not do either. So if you've got leaves like this, if you've got a little barbecue with a lid on it, light them up, burn them or just put them aside away from the compost pile or just put them in a big black plastic bag, tie the end up and solarize it until they disintegrate inside there. Now another thing that happens other than just viruses and if you want to know more about these uh, diseases. I did an article, um, subscribe to our newsletter, you'll get information every day on various things that are happening in the garden. It doesn't really matter what part of the world you live in, eventually we all have a spring and summer and we all grow tomatoes, I'd like to think that, uh, and it's good information to have as a reference point. Uh, another problem that occurs, and this is what I just noticed because you'll see at my feet here, I've pulled out the tomato, I've started pulling it apart, and as soon as I did that I noticed this, the brown inside, see that? That's a hollow stem. Now, before I talk about what that is, the symptoms of that is wilting on hot days, sudden wilting, and not so much a disease on it. By the way, this is blight as well on the stem. So if you notice that happening on your plant, that is a problem you can't fix. But back to the, the hollow stem, your plant will wilt not so much from blight, early blight or late blight, two different diseases, both carry a similar name. They're called blight, one's early, one's late. The early blight has round sort of circular markings and eventually halos around it, yellow um, rings around it, like this here there, folks. Now, it's almost impossible to recognise the difference unless you've been doing it all your life and I certainly haven't been studying this in-depthly but I do know when I see a disease, <laughs> I've got to get rid of it. Now the markings are on the leaves and they start to discolour and also then you get the stem and that's that's generally late blight, but that looks like it's been eaten as well. But no, that's, that's a blight on the stem that's developing and I'm going to show you another one a little bit later, which is on a young plant that's not as dehydrated as this. Now this part here that we've got going on there the plant was lying down on the ground and why I say it was because you can see all these lumps appearing. Well these are the beginnings of new roots developing because it was so close to the soil. So it was actually absorbing moisture from there even though the roots haven't emerged as yet, keeping the plant somewhat alive and with no wilt developing. But apart from that you can see the tops, there's a little bit of curl on it, it's like curly top virus, I think it's, that's what it's called. Again, these plants are riddled with problems, uh, but this here, if you've got a plant 
that's wilting suddenly. I've had a few messages come through, uh, I think it's been on Facebook, uh, people complaining or just really upset about the fact that they've lost three plants out of the 16 already. Sudden wilt overnight, um, well not on the night time but over the day and they've basically just withered away and died. And if there's no discoloration on the leaves, there's no you know, obvious signs of dieback or disease on there, well not dieback but disease, uh, you would point towards the root system. There's cutworm or lawn grub as we call it which eat the root system of the plant and then, then, then they, just, they don't just favour tomatoes, they favour all a host of plants. They initially started in our lawns, mainly in the lawns, but the adult grub itself is a beetle which flies and it will go from garden bed to garden bed laying eggs which eventually hatch and they turn into these little curl grubs. Well they're quite large in fact, they can get up to the size of your thumb with a brown or black head on them, white in colour. Now they eat the roots, whereas in here we have a stem borer. This is not the insect that I've just found in here that's done the damage. This one's just found its way in here, which is a worm that's found its way inside the plant because it was laying on the ground as I mentioned earlier. We've got all the new roots developing, I'm going to put him back in the garden. Let's just see a bit further up because this has been hollowed out already and we've gone quite far up the stem. Uh, it's not in here. Now what happens is the stem borer or the, the grub itself gets inside the plant right from the base of, of the stem and tunnels its way upwards causing it to become hollow like that. See there's a cavity there so that's half of the stem, the other half is the same and there is absolutely no way the plant can survive especially on a hot day. So I'm just going to work my way back down to the lower part of this plant and I cut this off. Yep, right at the base there, something just fell out. Did I just lose grubs? I think they just jumped out folks hollows there, see they've been eating their way in. What have we got? Oh, we've got everything in here mate. This is, look at that, another worm. So this has been gone for a while and they've made a home here. So we've got, is that anything there? No, that's not one. So we've got the worms. I've got to get them out and put them back in the shade. Give me a second. These worms have come out of the garden bed and we've got I call them butchy boys and they've all gone for a hiding because they got out of the sun. But the grub itself is small, almost like this size here, and it will be a, a, an off-white colour um, and sometimes light, a very light lime, light lime green colour. There's a worm in there, I just went, don't worry about it. And that is what causes it and it'll enter from the base of the stem. I'm taking this whole plant out by the way, so let it come out. Roots are pretty, pretty average for a plant this size. See that there, this is another part of the plant that was touching the soil, it started to grow its roots. That's what I mean by adventitious roots. They've developed and down below, so it didn't enter here. Did I cut it open? Yeah, this is solid. See just there, there's an entry point. Actually that might not be an entry point, I think it probably was to start with. Yeah, it looks like they try to eat their way into there and they've just given up and gone further up. And there's another point there. Now they've actually entered it from where it was touching the soil on here. And that was further up the plant. If I can bring that back to you, you can see it there. That looks like the main entry point where they've done the damage. Now if your plant is wilting like this and you can't see any other symptoms of, you know, dieback or anything like that, literally the, wilt, the leaves are just wilting. Chances are it's either stem borer, that's what I call it, or the uh, lawn grub that's eating the roots out of the plant, which gives the plant, uh, being, making the plant unable to take up moisture. And the same thing with the stem borer, you just can't uh, transfer the water or the moisture it needs up to the foliage to keep it hydrated um, fast enough. This is the one that I was telling you earlier that's got late blight on it. It's a different marking on it. It's actually blackening of the leaf and eventually it goes well, it starts to develop white spores on it, especially on the stems. So if you see these marks on your leaves and or stems, you need to remove them, folks. Once they're in, you can't fix it, folks. That's the unfortunate part. 
if you've got that on one plant or two of the lot in your garden bed, chances are they'll probably go to the rest of the beds as well. Hydrated lime, it's not something that I recommend on a regular basis to apply. At least if you can scratch around the base of the stem, for example, so that's coming out of the ground. Scratch around the base, expose some of the roots, yes, and then mix up the hydrated lime with water and paint it on to seal it. <coughs> that's probably the only thing, real thing you can do, up, um, you know, expect, except for using chemicals in the garden. And that's something I don't recommend you do at all, uh, especially in the soil, because if you're going to kill a bad insect, you're going to kill a good insect as well, uh, and microbes to go with that. So there's some things that you can look out for. If you want to learn more about this, you can subscribe to our newsletter, VasilisGarden.com is the website, and just click on subscribe, and it's free. You get a newsletter every morning with all the specials as well, so you're up to date with all that's going on in my garden and around the well, I'd like to say around the world, but around Australia. VasilisGarden.com, from me, Vasily, Maresi.